Ever stared at that dreaded check engine light? Panicking about what's wrong with your car? We've all been there. In this video, we're diving deep into the top reasons why that check engine light might be triggered and arm yourself with knowledge to tackle it. Please check the link in the description if you need to grab an engine code scanner, which will help you precisely diagnose the reason behind check engine light. Number 1. Loose gas cap. Let's start with a super easy one that you can check yourself before you even start the engine. You might just have a loose gas cap. Believe it or not, that little cap plays a bigger role than you might think. It's part of your car's evaporative emissions control system, which helps capture any gas vapors that escape from the fuel tank. Those vapors can contribute to smog and air pollution, so the system is designed to contain them. The gas cap creates a seal on the fuel tank. When you tighten it, you hear a clicking sound. That means the seal is engaged and the vapors are staying put. But if the cap is loose or cracked, that seal is broken, and those vapors can escape. This can confuse your car's computer, which might then trigger the check engine light. Number 2. Faulty Spark Plugs Spark plugs take the electrical current from the ignition coil and create a high-voltage spark at the tip. This spark jumps across the gap between the spark plug electrode and the ground electrode, igniting the air-fuel mixture in the cylinder. But over time, spark plugs can wear out due to erosion from those tiny explosions or get fouled by deposits from the burning fuel. When this happens, the spark they create can become weak or inconsistent. This leads to incomplete combustion, which means not all the fuel gets burned properly. Unburned fuel can leave deposits in the engine and exhaust system, reduce fuel efficiency, and cause rough idling. And guess what? It can also trigger the check engine light. Number 3. Faulty Oxygen Sensor The oxygen sensor, also known as an O2 sensor, monitors the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases, which is important information for ECU to determine the stoichiometric air-fuel mixture. When the air-fuel mixture is around stoichiometric ratio, the O2 sensor detects a level of oxygen in specific range in the exhaust gas. This tells the engine computer everything is running smoothly and the check engine light stays off. If there's too much air in the mix, which is called lean mixture, the oxygen sensor will detect a high level of oxygen in the exhaust. This tells the computer to add more fuel to compensate. However, a lean mixture can lead to higher engine temperatures and increased emissions of nitrogen oxides NOx, which can contribute to smog and hence the ECU turns on the check engine light. On the other hand, if there's not enough air in the mix, which is called rich mixture, the oxygen sensor will detect a low level of oxygen in the exhaust. The computer will then try to reduce the amount of fuel being injected. A rich mixture can cause incomplete combustion, which means not all the fuel gets burned. This can lead to rough idling, reduced fuel efficiency, and increased emissions of hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide and hence check engine light. Number 4. Catalytic Converter Catalytic converter takes harmful pollutants like hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide and converts them into less harmful gases like water vapor and carbon dioxide. There are two main stages of conversion. Oxidation stage. In the first stage, pollutants like hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide are exposed to hot exhaust gases and a precious metal catalyst, usually platinum, palladium, or rhodium. For example, hydrocarbons are oxidized into water vapor and carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide is also oxidized into carbon dioxide. Reduction stage. In the second stage, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, are tackled. These pollutants are formed during high-temperature combustion in the engine. The catalyst in the converter facilitates another chemical reaction that converts NOx into nitrogen gas, which is the main component of air we breathe. A clogged or failing catalytic converter can result in increased emission, rough idling, reduced fuel economy and bad exhaust odor, and hence the computer turns on check engine light. Don't ignore that check engine light, especially if you suspect a catalytic converter issue because replacing it is very expensive. Number 5. Secondary Air Injection System the secondary air injection system injects fresh air directly into the exhaust manifold downstream of the exhaust valve shortly after a cold start. This additional oxygen helps to burn off the unburned fuel particles in the exhaust stream, reducing emissions before they exit the tailpipe. The secondary air injection system is only active for a short period during cold starts, typically 30 to 90 seconds. If components like air pump, air injection valve, or check valve malfunctions, the computer may trigger the check engine light. Number 6. Mass Airflow Sensor Malfunction As air flows through an intake manifold, 
the sensor uses a heated wire element to measure the mass of air entering the engine. It is a wire element that gets hotter or cooler depending on the airflow and sends an electrical signal to the engine computer based on the temperature changes in the wire. If the MAF sensor malfunctions and sends a signal indicating less air entering the engine than actual, the engine computer will inject less fuel. This creates a lean air-fuel mixture which results in jerking during acceleration, rough idling, and decreased fuel efficiency. The engine computer will likely detect the problem and trigger the check engine light. On the other hand, a faulty MAF sensor might indicate more air entering the engine than actual. This leads the engine computer to inject more fuel, creating a rich mixture which results in black smoke from exhaust due to unburned excess fuel, loss of power, and strong fuel odor. Again, the engine computer will likely detect the problem and trigger the check engine light. Number 7. Faulty EGR Valve Exhaust gas recirculation is the introduction of small amount of exhaust gas back to the input stream mainly for two reasons. Reduced combustion temperatures, exhaust gas is inert, meaning it doesn't readily burn, and can act as a coolant. This is important because excessively high temperatures can lead to the formation of harmful nitrogen oxides, or NOx in the exhaust. Leaner air fuel mixture, the presence of inert exhaust gas in the intake stream allows the engine computer to run a slightly leaner air fuel mixture. This leaner mixture contributes to lower emissions overall. The EGR valve is located between the intake manifold and the exhaust. Under normal conditions, the engine computer controls the EGR valve to allow a small amount of exhaust gas to be recirculated back into the engine through the intake manifold. There are two main troubles with faulty EGR valve. Stuck open. If the EGR valve gets stuck open, it allows too much exhaust gas to recirculate back into the engine. This can cause several problems like rough idling, loss of power, and increased emission due to incomplete combustion which defeats its purpose and results in complete engine stall and sever case. Stuck closed. On the other hand, if the EGR valve gets stuck closed, it completely blocks the recirculation of exhaust gas. This can lead to engine knocking and increased emissions. Number 8. Other sensors. Other than the sensor we have discussed so far, your car has a network of sensors that feed a bunch of information to the ECU, which acts as the brain of the operation. We have coolant temperature sensor, throttle position sensor, crankshaft position sensor, exhaust gas temperature sensor, and so on. But just like any electrical component, sensors can wear out or malfunction over time. When a sensor goes wrong, it might start sending faulty signals to the computer. For example, a bad temperature sensor sends a signal that says the engine is overheating, even when it's actually running cool. This will confuse the computer, which might then throw the check engine light and trigger a bunch of unnecessary adjustments in the engine. Number 9. A Vacuum Leak Your engine has a lot of hoses and tubes that connect the intake manifold to various components that require vacuum pressure to operate. Here are some key units that require vacuum. Positive Crankcase Ventilation, or PCV Valve, this valve helps regulate pressure in the crankcase, which is the lower part of the engine block. The PCV valve allows controlled amounts of crankcase fumes to be drawn back into the intake manifold and burned in the combustion process. Brake Booster The brake booster uses engine vacuum to provide extra power when you press on the brake pedal. This makes braking easier, especially at low speeds. Emissions Control Components Some emissions control systems, like the EGR valve we mentioned earlier, rely on vacuum pressure to function properly. Several things can cause a vacuum leak, including cracked or damaged vacuum hoses. These hoses are made of rubber and can deteriorate over time due to heat, age, or exposure to harsh elements. A small crack or tear can be enough to create a leak. Faulty PCV valve. If the valve sticks open or closed, it can disrupt the intended vacuum pressure. Intake manifold gasket leak. The intake manifold gasket seals the connection between the intake manifold and the engine block. A leak in this gasket can allow unmetered air to enter the engine. Number 10. Timing Belt The timing belt precisely synchronizes the rotation of crankshaft and camshaft and ensures that the pistons in the engine cylinders move up and down at the exact moment the valves open and close to allow air, fuel, and exhaust gases to flow in and out at the right time. A worn-out timing belt can result in engine misfires, rough idling, jerking during acceleration, and loss of power and performance. The engine computer is likely to detect the engine misfires and trigger the check engine light as a warning sign. Number 11. Transmission Problem 
Issues related to transmission fluid may also turn on the check engine light. Even your car might have a dedicated transmission warning light as the check engine light can also act as a general indicator of trouble. Modern transmissions have sensors that monitor internal pressures, transmission oil temperature, speeds, and other parameters. If these sensors detect abnormalities, they send a signal to the engine computer, which may trigger the check engine light. Number 12. Electrical Issues If there's a problem with any of electrical systems, such as the battery, alternator, or wiring harness, it can trigger your check engine light warning. Number 13. Mystery Code Sometimes, the check engine light comes on, and even a fancy OBD2 diagnostic tools mechanics use have trouble figuring out why. This could be because of limited information as the check engine light is a general warning buzzer that tells you something's wrong, but it doesn't pinpoint the exact issue. Or it could be an intermittent problem that only appear occasionally. Or it could be a complex problem that they require consultation of car owner's manual. Alright, we explored check engine light in this video. The other warning lights have also their own specific reason. Check the link in the description for the best OBD2 scan tools that will help you read the engine code and repair your vehicle. If you're curious about what the other dashboard light means, let me know in the comments. And hit that like button and subscribe to support the channel.